It's time to upgrade our RAM on the Legion Slim 7A. Hi, welcome to Zigaju Review. So I do have a quick update on the laptop. I actually dropped this laptop a few days ago. Um, it was a very tragic, sad moment for me. So as you can see here in the corner is all chipped. It's all bent there because it kind of hit that corner. And then here on the front, you can see there that scuff of when the laptop fell on the ground and got all scratched up. But the worst of it happened in this corner right here of the screen. I don't know if you can see there how bad that is. It was actually bent upwards a little bit. Um, you can see how bad it got there. And but the laptop actually still still works fine. Despite that, I thought that I had completely destroyed it because I had it open um, like this, and I was walking to my car. Stupid move! Instead of just closing it, putting it under my arm or inside my backpack, which I also had with me, um, I was carrying it open, and so that was a really really stupid thing of me. But for some of you people who have been asking about how tough this is, how durable this is. Um, I got some comments asking about that, that durability of the screen because on the video it looks kind of wobbly. It is a pretty sturdy laptop. It, it can it can withstand punishment as, as I'm showing you here. Uh, I'm not proud of this moment, but it did happen. I figure I will share that with you, especially for the people who are looking into buying this and are worried about the durability of it. And hopefully you won't make the same mistake that I made. I have two different sticks of RAM. I have a Crucial DDR5 16 gigs of RAM right here. And then I have a Samsung DDR5 also 16 gigs of RAM. The reason why I got these two different types of RAM is because the Legion Slim 7i comes with a solder 8 gig RAM to the motherboard, which means that you cannot change. You can only up, add one stick to get more RAM. And that Samsung here is exact same RAM that is already soldered to the motherboard. So I figure, you know what, let's match it up, make sure there's no issues when you are upgrading your RAM. So this is exact same specs as what's already on the laptop, except that is 16 gigs. But then I thought, what if you want to use a different brand of RAM that isn't necessarily this Samsung one? So I went with the Crucial DDR5, again, 16 gigs. Specs are pretty much the same as what we have on the laptop to see if a different brand of RAM will create any issues. So if you are out there looking to upgrade your RAM, then you'll have more choices than just the Samsung one. And since I'm going into the laptop as well, I decided why not thermal paste that laptop. So I have this Coolmaster Cryofuse thermal paste, which I'm going to be applying to the laptop and hopefully this will also help with temperatures. Now, I haven't had really issues with heat. The that laptop does get hot when you're playing games, and I've actually been playing the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which is actually a pretty good game, and the laptop did get pretty hot with that game. Cool thing is that the laptop can handle high settings, and obviously that's contributing to, to the heat, and it's obviously testing the laptop. We'll see if this Cryofuse helps with thermals. So we're going to be doing those two things in this video, upgrading the RAM, and adding new thermal paste. It's really easy to take out. We have three, six screws, seven, eight total screws, nothing underneath the rubber feet. And I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to take it off. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that we have taken all the screws out, this should pop up very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and show you here. So if you see this little line there, I just pull here and then it starts coming off. So I'm just going to set it down to finish this. And 
and then the backing comes off completely very simple here we have the interior of the laptop here if we have the ssd that we added in a previous video here's the ssd that came installed with the laptop then under this casing right here so we have the ram and for the thermal pasting we're gonna have to go underneath that fan so i'm gonna do the run the ram upgrade first okay and so for this one it seems that there's clips all around the casing so we have to get those and latch those clips in order to remove this cover okay, so there is a little bit of tape here as you can see i'm going to pull that tape out Now we have the backing off and so here is the ram that we can remove so now that's what we're gonna do so we'll move a little arms to the side and this pops up and then we'll just pull this out i'm gonna be careful with this i'm gonna keep it there i'm gonna open so i'm gonna be doing crucial first and we're going to be moving the samsung in here to just keep it safe so we have crucial and we're gonna go this way okay so this tape is definitely getting in the way it's gonna have to take it off now we should be able to install it without any problems so push there installed push down and there is grabbed by the clips doing thermal pacing shouldn't be too hard because we just need to remove this part we don't need to remove the fans as some other laptops make you do so technically if we remove this one two three four screws we should be good okay, so we have some tape here that we need to remove as well or at least back it up a bit so that exposes the port to right here and more of a so it looks like this is all ready to come out but we haven't found the base screw right there so let's try to remove this one as well here so that is also part of this so this should help it come off see, there's one more screw right here that we weren't seeing behind the tape should be able to remove the whole chamber there so as you can see there we have thermal paste that we need to clean so here we have thermal paste that we need to clean there too and then we have the pads which we are not replacing so we're going to clean this first and then we're going to clean this all right so in order to clean this of course you can use um, alcohol to wipe it down same thing with the other side but here we have supposedly cleaning pads so we're going to open this up and see if that is true all right so we'll see what's in the packaging so box can put there then here we have the actual thermal paste which we're going to put here and then here we have the grease cleanser and we also have a spreading tool so it should make it easier to when you put thermal paste you can go ahead and spread it yourself and 
that is it, no instructions, nothing. I guess I expect you to know how to do this or to go to their website for videos. So I'm gonna open this. As you can see, there is a wiping here. So we're going to proceed and start wiping this. It's really in there. It's gonna take a little bit of work. So I'm going to speed this up for you. Okay, so you're gonna want more than this or at least alcohol in order to get this wet again because this thing dries really easily. I finish the graphics card and now I'm on the CPU and this is pretty much all out of alcohol. That spreading tool also helps as you saw to remove some of that hard uh, residue that's left in there so you can get it as clean as you can. There we go. That is as clean as it can be. So here we have the Coolmaster CrowdFuse tube. So you can see here it has a plastic wrap. So in case if you are having issues, just keep that in mind that it has that wrap in there you're gonna remove in order to remove the little lid. So once you do that, you should be able to start applying the thermal paste, which we're going to Go ahead and do now. So we have here. And I want to get as much coverage as I can. I want to lay it kind of thick as well. So that's a little thin application. I'm going to add more. There's one to cover the whole thing. And I know it's gone a little bit on the sides. That really is not that big of a deal, so we can get some paper towel and just clean it up a little bit on the sides if it bothers you. I personally don't think it's a big deal. That is on the sides. There's also been proof that if it spreads on the sides, that it doesn't make a difference when it comes to the performance of the device you're applying it on. So I'm going to also wipe here my spraying tool before I move on to the CPU. Okay, so that looks like enough coverage to me. And here we also went ahead and cleaned this up. So we're just gonna pull this back the way it was. So this is very simple to do. So we're going to put this here. Uh, oh, wrong way. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. So we're just gonna put this back here like this. won't be putting back the tape yet because we're going to go ahead and change this. I'm also going to lift the cover off because again we're going to go ahead and replace this with the Samsung one. So for now I'm just going to put the cover back on it. We're going to be using Premiere Pro to test out the RAM. We're going to be using the same clip for all tests. The only difference is going to be the amount of RAM allocated each time that we do the test. So the first test is going to be using the RAM that came with the laptop. And we have 11 gigs of RAM allocated to Premiere Pro in order to render the video. The video is my Pixel 7 Pro review. You should watch it if you haven't. And that video is 25 minutes, 42 seconds long, 4K, 24 frames per second. The first set of numbers that you see is going to be a one VBR pass and using all max rendering settings. Now I don't use YouTube rendering when I render a video, so I render it and then I 
upload it to YouTube. So that makes the video bigger. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a two VBR pass. And we're going to do that for each of the RAM stock RAM first. Then we're going to do crucial RAM and uh, on crucial on crucial and Samsung RAM because we're up to 24 gigs of RAM. We're going to be allocating 18 gigs of RAM to Premiere Pro in order to render that video. And we'll be able to get an idea of how much faster the laptop works when you have more RAM. So as we can see here in the results, we have on the first pass with the stock RAM, we have 20 minutes, 23 seconds. Then when we did the two pass was an hour, 25 minutes with the stock RAM. Then when we move to the crucial RAM, that speed drops to 70 minutes and 50 seconds for the one pass. And then to one hour, 21 minutes and some seconds for the second pass. Now, remember that on the first pass, we had 11 gigs of RAM going to Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is also set to performance. And then when we move to Crucial and Samsung, we go to 18 gigs of RAM again in performance out of a total of 24 gigs of RAM that we have now in the laptop. So then we move on to Samsung's results. And Samsung's results are really interesting because on the first pass, we actually lose some time where we go up to 18 minutes and 16 seconds. But when we move to that to pass, we see a dramatic drop in time to one hour, 15 minutes. And that's over a 10 minute difference than what we were getting with the stock RAM. And of course, six minutes difference than with the crucial RAM. And this is, of course, something I was not expecting to see. Clearly, Samsung is the fastest RAM here. Let's talk about the thermal pasting. So we added new thermal pasting to the laptop and I did not see a huge dramatic difference that I was expecting to see by applying new thermal paste. We did have the, the temperature stay in the high 80s, low 90s. It didn't go as high as it had before. So it did improve in thermals a little bit, but not a lot, not as much as I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to see a dramatic change in uh, thermals once we added the thermal pacing. Now, when it comes to RAM, which one am I going to be sticking with? Samsung. And the reason is because Samsung did better than Crucial when it comes to rendering videos and the timing there. I'm looking for things that are going to save me time when I'm rendering videos. And by Samsung beating Crucial's times, it does what I needed to do. Therefore, Samsung is the stick that I'm going to be sticking with. Now, as you can see, upgrading the RAM, adding thermal paste wasn't that hard. This laptop has clearly been made thinking about upgrading and making changes to it, which is so easy to remove that backing plate, remove the exhaust and all that to perform the things that you need to with very, very minimal work. So you shouldn't be afraid of uh, doing this yourself. So if you have any questions about this, about the laptop, if there's anything else you wanna see in the channel regarding laptops, let me know in the comment section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe, give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have videos. And thank you very much for watching.